Today I'm going to share with you five things that make me grateful that I immigrated to the United States of America. Happy 4th of July everyone. I have been in this country for 18 and a half, almost 19 years and before that I was born and raised in India for 22 years. Given that the first three years we kind of are just, you know, learning to talk and walk, I would say I have spent about the same amount of time getting to know each of the countries. And today I'm going to share with you five things that I have gained or learned because I moved to this country and in the period that I have been in this country. And these are very personal things. These are not what you would usually hear on channels like Talk Low where they are more generic. These are based on my personal experiences with the people I came across in those last 18 and a half years and that make me feel really warm and fuzzy inside about being here. Number five, you don't need to have perfect English to be here. And let me explain why I'm saying that because there is a backstory involved. In India, most of my high school education was in a vernacular medium. I did not go to an English speaking school. Besides science and math, everything that I studied was in Marathi, the local language. And kids who went to English medium school or convent schools had this way of talking really, really fast. And unless you spoke like that, you were considered kind of lower. And if you said a word wrong, people made fun of you. and that kind of would put most of the people like me who studied in local language schools not want to talk in English. And I actually did not talk in English until I came to the United States. But when I came to the United States, I was lucky enough that my roommate was an American girl from Pennsylvania and she was really understanding and accepting of me. Initially, I used to hesitate to speak with her. And when I apologized to her once about saying a word wrong, she said, don't worry about it. I don't speak your language, so I don't expect you to speak mine either. And that really stuck with me and that actually freed me from this mindset of not wanting to speak English. I just started talking freely. I started conversing with the locals and along the way I learned the accent. I learned the way they spoke and it really boosted my confidence levels up. And for that, I am really, really grateful. So thank you, Jerry. Thank you. All the people I met along the way for allowing me to learn this brand new language and just make it mine. Number four, beauty comes in all shapes, sizes, colors, and ages. Growing up in India, when you are in such a homogeneous racial environment, criteria for beauty become really, really narrow. India is a country that was ruled by British for almost 150 years. So our standards of beauty are kind of influenced by those that were in power over us for so long. When I was growing up, it was almost like if you are this shade and lighter, you're pretty. If you're this shade and darker, you're not. If you are this level of thin, then you're pretty, otherwise you're not. If you are this level of tall, you're pretty, otherwise you're not. And at the same time, only younger population used to be considered pretty. So much so that women who were in their early 40s were casted as mothers for men who were in their mid 40s. So that's kind of what was normal to me that I was one of the ugly person. Yeah, it does sound really sad. But here I talk to people who would come up to me and say, oh, I would like to get tanned and get your skin color. I kind of came to accept that my skin color is nothing to be ashamed of. It is actually something that is desirable in some parts of the world. And that kind of broadened my view of beauty and it included myself as a pretty person and for that I'm really thankful because it changed my standards of beauty to where I was beautiful to myself. Number three, we are all truly the same on the inside and we hear this sentence quite often in the media or we read it in books but being within such a diverse population gives you the opportunity to have deep, relaxed conversations with people from all over the world. And that gives you a whole different insight into their being. And that kind of starts to lift those preconceived notions or preconceived ideas that you might have about the society. And then you learn that there are nice people and scumbags and saints and sinners. And there are really really awesome people and there are horrible people in each and every society and those are not just words to you anymore you actually get to experience that 
for me, this country allowed me to have that experience and for that, I'm really, really thankful. Number two, mental health care is really important and it cannot be replaced just by a loving, caring family or support system. And there is a reason why I'm saying that because in India, there is a thought that if you have really caring family, they can take care of you in your darker times and that will just lift you out of those darker times automatically. And sometimes that is not true when it comes to mental health. Sometimes you have chemical imbalances that need to be treated and that can really help you overcome that mental health issue much faster. And because this country is so open to mental health care, I feel that there is a much wider, quicker acceptance of someone's mental health needs. I know that there needs to be much more awareness, but it is still at a much higher level than what it is that I've seen back home. And I would really like to raise that awareness in my birth country, but I'm really happy that it is already at a level that it is in the United States. And finally, number one is that kindness is the most important quality among the human qualities. Now, this could be just a part of me growing up in this country that I have come to this realization. Maybe most people do. I went from being a 22 year old to a 41 year old in this country. So maybe I would have felt the same way if I would have stayed back home. But I received so much kindness and understanding from the people that I met in this country in those last 18, almost 19 years that now it has become almost like a second nature to me. Like whenever I think of any situation, I always hold back any sharp remarks and think about the kindness that I received when I was going through really, really dark times. And people who actually had nothing to do with me at times helped me out. They were really kind to me. When even my family wasn't here because everybody was back home, I was here alone. So for those people, I'm really, really grateful. And I'm really grateful to this country for having such people in it. So whatever the craziness that's going on right now, we really don't need it. I think this country has been great and it will stay great. Happy 4th of July, everyone. Thanks again for watching and God bless America.